Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord has risen indeed, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia indeed. It's so good to be with you on this Sunday morning of Easter. Virtually, I know, I'm sorry we can't be together for the sunrise service here in Boca Grande, but hopefully our background will give you a little sense of what it's like. Um, no, I am not in my full vestments. If you were here right now, you would know. 100% humidity and almost 90 degrees makes it a little bit warm here in Florida. So um, thank you for allowing the bare minimum of our vestments today. Our liturgy will um, be a, an abbreviated portion of our Easter liturgy and I pray that it is a blessing for you as well as for those who tune in this morning. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the church at Colossae. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord Christ. On the first day of the week at early dawn, the women who had come with Jesus from Galilee came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen, linen cloths by them. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Will you join me in saying, The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. 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 This is a message of hope. It is a message of Easter. And it is a message that we can all uh, really hang on to in this time of pandemic, COVID, uncertainty, and fear. There is uh, many images that come to mind when I think about 
Easter and um, the message of Easter that I hope to bring to you, but one of the ones that comes most prominent to mind for me um, can be demonstrated through these two eggs, okay? If I were to ask you which of these two eggs you would like to have right now, if you could reach through your screen, your, your um, TV, and choose one of these two eggs, which do you think you would pick? This one that is filled with all kinds of yummy goodness, a little bit bigger, or this one right here, which is smaller and clearly not filled with anything. Let's see. Yep, it's empty. Well, I suspect most of us would choose this egg because we like to see, we like to know, we like to put our faith in the things that we can see and touch and feel. Yeah, so I think most of us would choose this one. But what if I were to tell you that what I, what I had intended for this egg right here, this seemingly empty egg, was, well, that the egg was too small to contain what went inside. What I had hoped to put in there was this right here. Can you see that? Let me hold it right in front of you for just a second. There is a bunny with long chocolate ears. There are bubbles and other eggs and all kinds of fun and goodness on the inside. This egg seems empty, but what was to go inside? Well, it was too small to contain it, right? And that's our hope, that's, that is the the joy, the promise of Easter is that death doesn't have the final say, that God is bigger than death, that hope and life is bigger than death, and that the tomb could not contain our Lord Christ. It cannot contain us. In this time of fear and uncertainty, I know there seems like there's just an awful lot of emptiness right now. There are empty stores, empty restaurants, empty pantries, empty wallets and bank accounts, and empty churches. Just an awful lot of emptiness. But the God that we place our faith in reminds us this morning that He is bigger than all of it, that, that His love cannot be contained, that his love will win out. His disciples felt, I think, very much like we do right now, uncertain and anxious. We hear Peter going to the tomb and still trying to figure out um, this faith, this what's going on. He, he doesn't get it all at once. It, it becomes gradual. It, it comes together piece by piece by piece for him. Well, I know that God is going to reveal the hope and the renewal for some of us quickly, like Mary who gets it, who, who realizes the tomb is empty and alleluia, he is risen and the promises that, that God made are, are fulfilled. And for those of us who can, can get it that quickly, amen. But there are many Peters, there are many other disciples who take a little bit of time to put all the pieces together, to realize that God keeps his promises and that he will see us through these difficult days. I remember a sermon from when I was a teenager, my parish priest, when I was about 15 or 16 years old. I, I remember him saying in his Easter sermon, if you were the only person on earth, Jesus still would have come and died for you so that you would not be lost. That was such a big concept for me to grasp as a 16-year-old. Can you imagine? If I was the only person in the world, Christ still would have come and, and died and burst forth from the empty tomb so that I would not be lost. I would not be left behind and forgotten. God, well, He's a God who comes for each and every one of us. 
and he will come to you in your fear, and he will come to you in your uh, uncertainty, in your hunger, in your need. Our message this morning of Easter is Christ has risen. He has overcome the greatest bound, the, the, the greatest uh, hurdle, which is death. And he has brought life. This may not be a Harvard sermon, but it's, it is a, a simple truth that God loves each and every one of us, and he is with each and every one of us. The statistics of um, death and illness and, and sickness right now may seem overwhelming. Death seemed very overwhelming for the disciples too. But there is hope. There is the hope of the empty tomb. If the image of the empty tomb, of our God being so big that his love cannot be contained even by death and loss and fear, if this message does not capture your imagination or your heart, perhaps this verse from 2 Corinthians 5.14 will. Caritas Christi Ergat Nos, which simply means the love of Christ urges us on. The love of Christ urges us on. This love seen in small and large acts of compassion and kindness will breed the very hope that the empty tomb proclaims. Here at St. Andrews, Christ the Lord has continued to be proclaimed amidst the enemy who will not defeat us, although he may hurt us. We need to continue to pray for the church, for the world, and for those who are on the front lines. And so in just a moment, we will turn our attention to that. But I want to say that while it is true that COVID-19 knows no borders, neither does faith, hope, or love. May you be an instrument of compassion and kindness and love. And in doing so, fill that tomb. Fill it with all good things that death and sin and fear may not overcome us. Alleluia, Christ has risen. Please join me in saying, The, the Lord, Lord is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. This Easter, as we shelter in our own homes during this pandemic of the coronavirus, I believe it's important now more than ever to proclaim what it is that we believe and to do that with a sense of confidence and assurity. And so will you join me in proclaiming the Apostles' Creed together, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers continue with the Lord's Prayer and the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The prayers of the people. Alleluia. What was dead shall live, what was dark shall shine, what was forgotten shall be remembered. 
for the Lord is risen and walks among us. Let us therefore confidently bring before God the needs of all our world, asking God for renewal, saying, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. On this feast day, which brings joy to all Christian believers, may we commit ourselves to work toward the unity of the church, that Christ's body may be one. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Honoring the gift of Christ's risen body, may we rise to serve all those who needs keep them from seeing themselves as the image of God. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. For all who have need of the gift of Easter, for all who journey from illness to health, from despair to hope, from grief to consolation, from loneliness to love. We remember especially those who have asked for our prayers and those on our parish prayer list. For all our brothers and sisters, that death may have no more power over us. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. For all who suffer and who mourn, that today the Lord God will wipe away all tears. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May we have the persistent faith of Mary Magdalene and the surprised belief of Peter and John. May we long to be God's sign of life in our world. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May we be one in faith with all who have died in Christ. For our life is lived with Christ in God. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. You give life to your saints by setting a banquet table of rich food. Feed us with the bread of life and bring us with all your saints to the feast that has no end. Alleluia. Christ has risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Accept our prayers and all whom we commend to your mercy. With the Father and life-giving Holy Spirit, be with us as the spring of new and everlasting life. Amen. The peace be with you. Please, if you are with somebody, turn and exchange the peace. And if you are by yourself, maybe Hit pause on your video and make a phone call to wish somebody Happy Easter. And now as we come back together, let us just enjoy a second being with our St. Andrew's family and friends, listening to a little bit of Easter music, and then we'll be sent out with the final blessing. May the peace of God, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. This concludes our virtual Easter liturgy. I pray that it is a blessed Easter for each and every one of you. 
Stay safe until we can be together again. God bless. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to you. Have a great week. Blessings. Happy Easter! Happy Easter to everyone from Pam and Cesar Olivero. Peace be with you all. It's Jeff and Kathy Baumgartner with warm wishes from Bemidji, Minnesota. Also known as God's country. We want to wish everybody a blessed Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. John Parrish here wishing you all a very happy Easter. Liz and I are back in our home in Castine, Maine. Happy Easter! Christ is risen. Alleluia! Alleluia! A healthy and happy Easter from Denny and Kay. Happy, happy Easter, Easter to all our beloved friends at, at St. Andrews. Andrews. We are missing everyone. We just wanted to share with you that the Easter Brunny brought a present. You can see this is very hard to get and it's in the Easter Bunny's basket. And an angel dropped in the mail for Easter for us. Masks. Masks. So we want everybody to stay safe. We miss you all and praying for all to be healthy. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.